I was actually quite surprised to learn that Tyron Woodley would be the next in the growing list of MMA fighters to bring their talents to the boxing ring. And as much as I wanted to stay clear of giving the Paul brothers and their exploitation of boxing my time, it has clearly gone beyond the point of acceptance within the sports community. And though there are still questions and a certain level of hesitation I feel about giving these guys our platform here at MMA Dive, to ignore what's happening right now would be a bit lazy in my own mind. Because through Logan Paul coaxing Floyd Mayweather into the ring with him, through Jake's first round knockout of Ben Askren early this year, they've moved themselves into a certain level of legitimacy that makes them a factor within the world of combat sports. How much of a factor, and how important of a factor? That's up to you on an individual level. But I suppose what I'm trying to say is that with the announcement of Jake Paul's next showdown against the former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley, to not give my take, at least in my eyes, would be a stance that would not really affect the type of change that most of you think it would. I think we're past the point of giving these guys too much of a spotlight, they've kind of forced their way into it. And with that being the case, we still have a fight on our hands, and I think that despite our reservations about this fight's very existence, it's a pretty interesting pairing that I can't help but be at least a little bit intrigued by. These freak show contests definitely bring a certain amount of unknowns and x-factors, and while I do think that they eventually will hit a wall for now, let's dive into Jake Paul vs Tyron Woodley and see what comes up. So I suppose to begin, I will admit that I was pleasantly surprised by the showdown between Paul and Ben Askren, both due to Jake's ability to make the differences between the two crystal clear, and also because of the fact that I picked Askren's decades of competitive experience to be the difference between the two, and it ended up not factoring in at all. So yeah, I underestimated the ability, athleticism, and dedication of the YouTube star to this sport, while overestimating the merits of a life's worth of fighting experience when it comes to translating those skills into the more linear world of boxing. Jake Paul probably would have beaten Ben at least 9 times out of 10 on the merits of him being the stronger, better athlete, the more skilled and talented boxer. I don't think Ben's head was in the game, and I think his heart would allow him a loss at this point in his career if it meant bringing in the type of money and exposure that it did. So I suppose the question now surrounds what Tyron Woodley can do that Ben Askren couldn't. Because we can assume that Jake Paul will be better this time around. Perhaps marginally, perhaps significantly. But even if he's a low-level professional boxer, he's still very much in it right now. Tyron, in comparison to Askren, is a much better athlete for the sweet science. He's faster, more powerful, more explosive, and a much more technically advanced striker. He has stood in there with Stephen Wonderboy Thompson for 10 rounds though in something of a stalemate, but in his perception of what is actually going on in the striking world, he was able to stand there and in some ways freeze Thompson up for the most part, due to that right hand and due to the threat of takedowns. Now does that mean he can deal with low level boxing offense from a guy who has proven his ability to knock his opponents out? Does that mean he'll be able to adapt his slow and methodical style to a sport that really requires a higher level of output than he has usually shown? And can he learn to fight in 10 ounce gloves to a level that doesn't see him lose whatever competitive advantages he already has over Jake in textbook striking? Because given that Woodley has fought guys like Wonderboy, Darren Till, Robbie Lawler, it would stand to reason that he is the quote unquote better striker of the two. But let's not forget where Tyron is at right now. If you're enjoying this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our latest uploads, before leaving a comment to let YouTube's algorithms know that we're fast becoming one of the best MMA channels on the platform. Tyron Woodley has 4 straight fights and about 16 straight rounds in the can. He has well and truly been dominated in every sense of the word by Kamaru Usman, Colby Covington, Gilbert Burns and most recently Vicente Luque. At 39 years old, it is hard to imagine how much can actually be done with this transition over to boxing. How much can be done to to train this clearly unconfident fighting spirit into a new set of tools, both in offense and in defense. Sure, Woodley has boxed before, perhaps not to this level of pressure, but in many ways, even with his losing streak in mind, the competitive energy of a fight with a low-level professional boxer should not be a major concern for Tyron if he's taking this seriously. And to be honest, I think there's more for Woodley to win here than Askren had to win coming in. Ben always seemed to have a level of comfort in defeat, or like a healthy attitude towards it, perhaps one molded by his earlier years on the wrestling mats. But I think Woodley stands to gain a lot from beating Jake Paul, especially now that the YouTuber has been legitimized to a certain extent thanks to his win over Askren. So if we were to assume that Woodley comes in at his best, or the best that he can be at in terms of what he can do to prepare, will that be enough for him to defeat the younger of the two Paul brothers? Well I was wrong about Askren and though Woodley is the far better striker of the two, between him and Ben, I don't actually think that his fighting style will allow him to make much of a dent in the boxing ring. He's never been a combination puncher and his tendency to fight with his back to the cage, or in this case the ropes, just isn't built for boxing. 
Adding to that, his head just can't be in the same place that it was in his best two years as champion. Although I wouldn't be surprised to see him win or finish him with an overhand right, I really think that the boxing fundamentals and the overall athleticism of Jake Paul will see him finish Woodley within the opening two rounds. And I can't really believe I'm saying that, but to say that Jake has been smart in his selection of his opponents would be the biggest understatement of the century. I kind of hate it, but I'll definitely be tuning in and there's no other way to put it. But what do you make of this latest addition to the ongoing trend of crossover matchups? And given that it's now set in stone, who do you think will be the one who gets their hand raised when all is said and done? Do let us know in the comments section below, we always love to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and a comment before subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date with all of our latest uploads. Thank you for watching.